Hi, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a BL touch on your Sidewinder X1 using my custom extruder PCB, mounting bracket, and firmware. So cue the intro and let's get started. There are a few things that you're going to need before you start taking anything apart. First, you'll need to print the mounting bracket for the touch probe. I will leave a link in the video description that contains the STL file and the required firmware to complete the install. You will also need to get yourself a ferrule kit and a crimper. You can find these on Amazon for around 30 bucks. I will also leave a link for that in the video description. We are going to start on the inside of the machine. Be sure to disconnect the power cable from the printer while doing any work on the inside. Flip the printer on its side and remove the cover. It's held on with these six fasteners. Ensure you are holding the cover when you remove the last screw. If it falls, it can break the fan wires or break the connector off of the main board. All of the connections will be hot glued in place. You can use a heat gun or a blow dryer to soften the glue enough to unplug the necessary connectors. On the main board, you will see a loom with three brown wires and one with a single black wire. You will need to move these to a different location. Unplug them along with the Z-axis end stop found here. Once again, using heat to soften the glue. Connect the single black wire to the number one position where the Z end stop was connected. Now connect the plug with the three brown wires on the first servo spot, the one closest to the edge of the board. Make sure that it is oriented so the visible metal contacts are facing the inside of the board like so. They will touch the second row of contacts but will not cause any harm or interfere with the functionality of the probe. While we are here, Disconnect the serial cable from the touchscreen, as this is a required step to update the mainboard firmware. Make a mental note of the connector orientation or snap a photo with your phone if that is easier for you. When you are finished, go ahead and turn the machine back upright. Next, it is time to work on the extruder side. Start by carefully disconnecting the ribbon cable. I recommend using a piece of tape to hold it back so it doesn't get in the way while you work. Your printer may still have the plastic cover on. Go ahead and remove it. It is held with these two screws. Unplug the short harness connecting the stepper motor to the breakout board. Then unscrew the fasteners holding the board in place. Gently pull the board away from the stepper motor and remove the spacer between them. Next, carefully unplug the connectors for the fans, thermistor, and heat block. Take extra caution with the thermistor wires as they are very thin and easy to break. The connector for the heat block will need to be replaced with some ferrules. The wires are short, so you will need to cut the contacts off right at the base of the crimped section. To get access to them, you will need to extract them from the connector. Using a small screwdriver or pick, press down on the locking tabs and pull the wire free. This can be a bit fiddly, and they may not release easily. When you have them removed, cut off the contacts as close as you can to the base of the crimped section. Now select a couple ferrules. I found the white ones to be the best fit but your kit may differ from mine. I recommend test fitting an uncrimped ferrule into the mating end of the new connector to ensure a proper fit. Now strip back the insulator. You can slide it off the conductor and use a ferrule to measure how much you need to cut off. Make sure you have enough of it pulled from the wire so you don't cut any more off of the end. Push the insulator back up the conductor as far as it will go. Now crimp on the ferrules. I find it easiest to hold the ferrule in place by lightly securing it to the crimper. Then insert the wire until it is flush with the end of the ferrule and slowly squeeze the crimper down. Now install the crimped ends into the new heat block connector oriented so the screw heads will be facing up. Use a small flathead screwdriver to tighten the screws down on the ferrules. Now it is time to install the new breakout board. Connect the thermostat, hot end fan, heat block, and part cooling fan. The mounting bracket for the probe serves as the spacer previously removed. I found it easiest to mount the probe to the new bracket before installing it on the printer. If your probe came with a short loom, use it to reduce the amount of wire you will need to stow out of the way. You can route the wire in front or behind the stepper motor, whichever you prefer. Place the new probe bracket assembly between the stepper motor and the breakout board and begin threading in the mounting screws. It's easiest to start with the top screw first, as the new board will be a snug fit next to the carriage drive belt and that screw is a little bit more difficult to line up and get started. Once you have both screws started, you could tighten them down. Now you could plug the stepper motor back in. Then connect the BL touch wires like so. 
Your probe might have different color wires and you will need to refer to the technical data for your probe to see what color wires carries what signals. On the board, the pin connections are as follows. From the gantry forward, signal slash servo, plus five volts, ground, ground, and probe slash trigger. Now unlock the ribbon cable connector by pulling the locking tabs back. Then carefully insert the ribbon cable. You should feel it bottom out inside the connector. Lock the connector by evenly pushing the tabs back down. The extruder cover will no longer fit, so go ahead and set it aside somewhere. Optionally, you could remove the Z end stop itself, since now the probe serves as that end stop. This way you can compress down the leveling springs a little bit more to give yourself a more stable tram. Now that we've finished the hardware portion of the modification, it's time to do the software. What you're going to need is a laptop and the USB cable that came with your printer. Go ahead and plug the printer into your laptop now. The USB cable will provide power to the main board, but I also recommend turning on the main power just in case something happens with the power on your laptop while it's updating. If it shuts off while it's updating, it could brick the main board. We don't want to do that. I'm going to be using Prusa Slicer to update the main board. You could do it with just about any slicer. I just prefer Prusa because it's the simplest for me. If you don't already have it, you could download it for free. I will leave a link in the video description for that download. Go ahead and open up Prusa Slicer. Then go to Configuration, Flash Printer Firmware. It should automatically detect the port that the USB cable is plugged into to the printer. Then just browse to the folder we previously downloaded and open it. Inside you will see a folder called Firmware then compiled firmware. Inside that folder, you'll see a file called firmware.hex. Select it and click open. Then click flash. This takes about a minute to complete. When it's done, it'll say flashing succeeded. Go ahead and close that window and close the slicer. Now you can power off and unplug the USB cable from the printer. Lastly, we're gonna update the touchscreen firmware. You're going to need a micro SD card that is 8 GB of capacity or less format to a FAT32 file system. If you don't have one that is that small, I'll show you a little trick in Windows real quick on how to partition it down to that size. Go down to your search bar and type in Disk Management. Click on Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. You'll see your micro SD card probably at the bottom, and here it says it's 29.72 GB. Right click on it and click delete volume. Go ahead and click yes. Now it'll black it out and say that it's 29 gigabytes of unallocated space. Right click on it again, click on new simple volume, click next and give it a capacity of say four gigabytes, 4096. Click next and next again. In file system, make sure it says FAT32 and then make sure perform a quick format is checked and click next and finished. Now, if you go to this PC, you will see that the computer now reads it as a four gigabyte SD card. This is perfect. Go back to the folder that we downloaded, go back to firmware, and you'll see MKS TFT 28. Open that and copy the contents of that folder into the SD card. We did previously unplug the serial connection from the touchscreen, so we're going to need to plug that back in. When plugging the serial cable back into the screen, ensure that you have the connector centered in the socket as it's not keyed and it's possible to plug it in incorrectly aligned and the screen won't turn on if you do that. Next, insert that micro SD card into the micro SD slot on the printer and then power the printer up. The update should start automatically and will take just a few minutes. When it's completed, the printer will restart and you will be greeted with a new startup logo and a new UI. And that's it. The hard part is complete. I've gone ahead and reinstalled the bottom cover. I recommend you do the same before starting a test print. The stepper drivers get pretty hot and may not function well without the cooling fan running. We are ready to do a function test on the probe, then do a test print. First, we need to set the USB as the file source, calibrate the Z offset, level the corners, and run auto-leveling. Let me show you how to do just that. 
we're going to start by setting the file source back to USB. Go to Settings, then Source, and select USB. It will highlight when selected. Go back to the home page. Now we could do a functional test of the probe. Go to Tools, Home, and Home All. The X and the Y axis will home, then the hot end will move to the center of the gantry and the gantry will begin coming down. Test the probe with your finger to ensure that the gantry stops properly. If it doesn't, you'll need to quickly power off the machine to prevent it crashing into the build plate. If that happens, you're going to need to retrace your steps and ensure that you've wired everything exactly as I've demonstrated. If it does work, we can move on to setting a Z offset. One thing to note is you might see this error. This is pretty normal when you test the probe with your finger. To clear it, just restart the machine. If you do start it up and you notice that the light continues to blink inside your probe, this is pretty common, it's just something stuck between the probe and the main board. You can just recycle the power to the machine again and that should clear it out. There we go, it's happy now. Go to Tools, More, Reset EEPROM, Save to EEPROM, then Preheat PLA. You can go back to the home page to monitor the temps as they rise up. When the machine's all warmed up, we can go ahead and set our Z offset. Go to Tools, More, like Z offset. The machine will home and the hot end will stop right over the center of the build plate. Now you can use a piece of paper or a feeler gauge to feel the gap between the nozzle and the heat bed. Use Z up and Z down to adjust the height of the gantry until you get your gap correct. When you feel the gap is correct, go ahead and select Save to EEPROM. Now do a good corner level to ensure that the build plate is trammed properly. Go back, level corners. When you feel that you've got the corners leveled pretty good, we need to go back and double check the Z offset. As leveling the corners, can affect that. Go back, more, Z offset. After you've made your final adjustment, go ahead and save that to EEPROM. Now we could run the auto leveling. Go ahead and select auto level on the menu. The machine will probe 25 points on the build surface and build a 3D mesh of its contour. When it's completed, it will return to center and automatically save that mesh to the EEPROM. Now we can go ahead and do a test print. In the file that you previously downloaded, there's a level test G-code. Go ahead and copy that to a USB drive, load up your favorite PLA, and start the test print. Be sure to give the build plate a really good cleaning with some isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel or microfiber cloth. This G-code will print nine squares, one layer thick across the build plate. You could use these as a visual guide to see how accurate your gap is between your build plate and the nozzle. If you go into tools and more, you can see we have options for baby stepping. You can go up and down on the Z-axis until it is just right. And when you feel that it's correct, you can save it to EEPROM and that will update the Z offset in the EEPROM so you don't have to go back and do this again, it just saves it. Seem to be right on the money. I'm gonna go ahead and let this finish and ensure that the rest of them are just as good. Be right back. Alrighty then, test print complete. All nine of these squares look absolutely perfect. And I know that my build plate has quite a concave in the center, about two tenths of a millimeter. And this setup had no problem compensating for it. So I'm gonna call this one a success. And that completes this modification to your Sidewinder X1 3D printer. A few things to note about this firmware is you do not need to run the auto level before each print and you don't need to add any start g-code to your 3d printer profile the only time you will need to rerun the auto level is if the machine loses its tram or if you reset the eprom also 
The ICNU Extruder breakout board has only been known to work on the V4 machine, and I can't guarantee that it will work properly on an older version printer. And that's it. You now have auto leveling on your Sidewinder X1. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I try to answer all the comments I get. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, give it a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Happy 3D printing, and as always, thanks for watching.